Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this is an introduction to Express from the perspective of building an API. I've done other videos where I went over Express, but mostly when focused on teaching Express from the point of view of building the whole application from Express. So the visual and the data and all that stuff. And the reason I'm doing this so that way I can teach Express from scratch, but from the point of view of building an API. But at the end of the day, what are you doing when you use Express? Express is a back-end framework. So what you're doing is you're building a server. Because the way the internet works is that you type in a URL. That URL then gets routed to something called domain name service, which is like a big giant phone book for the internet that tells it what IP address is your website located at. That request goes to that IP address and then there's a server waiting for it, like software on a computer that we'll refer to as a server. And the server processes the request and then sends back a response. That response then gets sent all the way back to your browser and then that's the website you see rendered in your browser. So basically a code happening in two places. On the server, which does a bunch of stuff and then sends a response, and then on your front end, which renders HTML, CSS, JavaScript in your browser. So when you're working in Express, what you're doing is you're designing the logic. You're designing what happens on the server piece. You're designing what happens from when the request is received to when the response leaves. So always think when you're thinking backend, that the backend code exists between those two events. Request being received, response being sent. And as long as you think of it that way, it becomes a lot easier to kind of think through when do you do something in your backend code versus when do you do it in your front-end HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Cool. Now, when you're using Express as a JavaScript backend framework, the cool thing about backends is that it, ex it only happens on one computer, okay? So in that case, you can choose whatever programming language you want to do backend work in because all that happens on the server computer and then the response is sent as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So what language was used to do stuff on your computer doesn't matter. So, but why not use the same language you used on the front end? Why not use JavaScript? So eventually someone created what's called Node.js that allowed you to do server work using JavaScript. So whenever you're doing backend work with JavaScript, you're technically doing it through Node.js. That is the the sort of the engine that allows you to, to run JavaScript code outside of the browser. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder for a new project here in my Express folder. So we're going to say um, test1. This is just a test project. I'm going to open it up in Terminal. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to make a server.js file. That's going to be where we kind of design our server. And I want to kickstart a new node project. So I type in npm init dash y. The dash y just allows you to skip all the prompts. And it creates this file, package.json. This is the file that node uses to kind of know what's going on. So this kind of tells node everything about your project. Right now, nothing particularly important I need in there. Okay, you'll see in a moment. Now I'm going to install dependencies. I'm going to install the different things I want to use to build my application, which right now primarily is Express. I'm going to install Express. So node install Express. I also want to install something called Nodemon. Okay, node install Express. Ins node install, uh, wait. Hmm. Let's see here. Go back to the command. Node install Express. Nodemon throw error. Oh, it's npm install. Ah, you can tell I just woke up. Okay, npm install, because it's node package manager. Node install express and nodemon. So I'm going to let those install, but what I want to do is I want to set up some scripts so that way I can run my code in different ways. So I'm just going to delete these two scripts here. And I'm going to want a dev script. 
Why? Because it's an easy one to remember. Dev. Now, generally, you'll see later on, I'm going to want that every time I change my server, that it restarts. So that way, it's always running with the freshest code. Because the way a server works is that once you load it up, even if I change the code, it's already loaded up. So the changes won't be reflected. So what Nodamon does is it, l it listens for changes in your code and then restarts the server, um, which is really great for development. Not necessarily great for production because you're not changing the code once you deploy it. So generally when we deploy, we're going to want a production script that just runs it without the whole list without the listener slowing things down so that will say is node server.js cool and again you can run these scripts by just typing in npm run name of scripts I can type in npm run dev it then looks in this file package.json looks in the scripts it finds a script named dev and then runs this command and that's how that works so I type in npm run it looks in my so package.json is always going to be what npm and node is looking for to kind of know how certain things work. Also, notice right over here that my dependencies showed up. So everything I install automatically shows up in my package.json. That's another reason that this is important because now look, I can everything I just installed shows up in this node modules folder. Okay, so there's all the source code for all the libraries I just downloaded. I can now just delete this. And now if I want to reinstall it, I don't have to type in each individual package again because it's now listed in my package.json. So now I can just type in npm install and it automatically is going to read my package.json file, look at the dependencies and install what's in there. Okay. And let me just do this. Okay, it's there. Because if I do ls dash la, you'll see the node modules folder is there. It's just VS Code didn't update it over here, so but it's there. Cool. So now we know how to set up the project. So the project's set up. Now we just have to build our server. Okay. In Node, the way you bring in the libraries you're using is like such. So for Express, we're going to create a variable called Express. And we're going to want to load the express library into that variable. So we we'll do const express, and then you have to use this function called require. What require does is that when I do this, if I do no express, just the name of the library, it's going to go into my node modules folder and look for that library, and then store whatever that library exported. If I want, if I would <clears throat> well, let's see, is there a way for me to refresh this? Uh, well, if you were to go into your node modules folder, you can find the actual express files and see that what it exported. And whatever it exported gets stored in this variable. So essentially what we're doing is we're bringing in the express library. Now the thing is that express what you want to do is you want to create an application object that represents your server application. So we're going to create a variable called app, which equals express as a function. We invoke the express function, which creates this new application object, and there it exists. Now, just to kind of understand how this works, what's going to happen is that once the server starts running, it's going to take the request that comes in from outside, the request to your server, and begins running it in order through all the things we're going to put below going forward. Okay, so you just want to think of this essentially this this data, this request data that's being passed like like um, like essentially like a relay race from one function to the next, which is referred to as your middleware. Okay, and middleware just means the stuff that happens between the request coming in and the response going out. It's in the middle. Okay, that's its middleware. So I'm going to refer to things as middleware and routes, but at the end of the day, it's really all middleware. It all happens in the middle. So we're generally, all here is going to be all our middleware, everything we want to happen in between request and response, but at the very bottom, we're going to want to put our listener. This is technically what triggers our server. So I'm going to do app.listen. 
and then we have to tell it what port we want to listen on because every computer has a bunch of different IP ports okay and there's thousands if not hundreds of thousands I think maybe tens of thousands of different port numbers usually the first 2,000 are used for different things so don't use those numbers but beyond that you can use whatever number you want so I'm gonna use well usually typical 3,000 so I'll just stick to that okay for dev for development purposes so I'm gonna say hey I want this application to listen on port 3,000 so it's only looking for requests that are coming in on that specific port so if I send them anywhere else it won't hear it okay and then you can pass in a function as to what happens when it starts when it's done listening so usually we'll just put a little message here console.log listening on board 3000 cool so now let's just test it out so if I type in npm run dev to run our script see it runs a script and you can see notamon starts up this is all telling you that notamon started because it ran our dev script which uses the notamon command and then look there's our message it's listening on port 3000 <clears throat> so now if I go to the browser actually I'll do this okay I'm just gonna hide that for a bit the way you access a server that's running on your local computer is you're gonna go to a website called localhost then you'll put a colon and specify what's what server IP port you're listening to so we're gonna do a localhost 3000 now if I go there I get this cannot get that's what Express sends when it doesn't know what to do with your request it's like I don't know what to do with this okay so it means it can, by default when you put something in your browser window right here is what's referred to as a get request is you're trying to get something so what this is telling me is that the server doesn't know how to get what I want this is the URL that I requested when it's just a slash that's the, what's called the root URL that means just the domain name by itself and it's just saying, hey, there's no, the, the server doesn't have any directions on how to handle this request. But at least I know the server's running. It may not be doing anything, but it's running. So now I can update it. Let's create our first um, route. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a section here called routes. Now, routes are how you handle requests. They're the thing that says, okay, you requested this particular URL, do this thing. So we're talking about a get request to the root. So let's create. So what you do is you do app app dot get, which means hey, a get request. Okay, and then we're going to specify what the endpoint is slash. So we're saying a get request to the root, and then we pass in a function, and the function always takes in two objects: the request and the response object. Okay, the request and the response object. And the request and the response object are essentially just objects with a bunch of data you can use. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna console, and basically this is gonna keep, this function should send a response back to the user. So that's what this response object is for because it has all the functions for sending response. So the simplest one is just to say res, the response object, and we're gonna use a function called send which just sends some, some text back. So we'll say, hello world. So now when I go to the root here, so when I go to this root URL, I get back hello world now because it goes in here, it hits this route, this route matches the URL. So it executes in there until it gets a response. Once a response is sent, the server's done, okay? Nothing else happens. So you've got to keep that in mind. If I put any code after res.send, it may or may not happen. Okay. Cool. Now let's see here. So that's hello world. Now if I want to create another route, so if I want to, let's say, create a route called cheese, so that would be like slash cheese. So right now that doesn't exist yet. So you see, cannot get cheese because it doesn't exist. I can create a route for cheese. Last cheese and it's rec res 
I can just be like res.send. You did it again. And now when I refresh, I did it again. Yay. Okay. Cool. Now, this isn't the most exciting thing in the world, just in these little text messages. What we really want to do is like, create like an API. Okay. So let's pretend we had some sample data. Sample data. So I'm going to say const data equals, um, we'll make it an array. We'll make it an array of people. So we'll create an object that has a name. We'll say this is Alex Merced. An age. Actually, I'm 35. Then we'll create some other random person name Bob Age fifty five. So we have this array of two people. So what I can do is I can create another route called app dot get. Slash data. And rec res. Okay, and this will be, we're gonna res.json, which means we're gonna send it back as JSON data. We're specifically saying, hey, we're sending back JSON, and I'm sending back that data object as JSON. Okay, so it's a response of JSON. So now when I go to data, See, now I get back JSON data. And again, I can have another website that makes a request to this URL, pulls that data in, and then use it on their website. Okay, it's, it's an API now. Neat. Okay, see, that's not so hard. But there's a lot more stuff we can do with it. Okay. So let's show you about, like, URL params. So another get. Okay, so what if I do this? slash random okay so notice I put this colon here that tells express that it's what's called a URL parameter which means it's a variable you're specifying in your URL okay so what's gonna happen is that um, first let me finish this route so comma rec res okay and then we're just gonna res dot send back whatever the random is and the this kind of data gets stored in your request. So in your request, rec, okay, so again, I named it rec. You could just type in request response, but rec res is a much better abbreviation for saving time. Inside the rec or request object, there's an object called params. That's where all these parameters get stored. And since I named it random, it's in a property named random. So now if I type in some random word here, we'll say, hello see it's gonna check and again express does everything in order so first it checks it does it match this no does it match this no does it match this no does it match this yes so if I do that see I just get back hello because that's what I put in for the param because it's right after the slash and you can have multiple params so I can be like random two okay and then you know we'll print out both rec oh wait, no, i can't do that um let's put in rent let's send back let's send in random two so hello mm, let me think about this how oh, i want to do that actually let's do it this way random plus space plus rec dot params dot random two. There we go. So that way it builds a string of both. Okay, so if I go hello slash world, this becomes random and this becomes random two. And there you go, hello world. 
okay and usually you're not using that to print stuff on the screen you're usually using this to get like an ID number for a record you want to delete or add or edit or update but the point is you can the point is you can send data in there via the URL so that's one way you can send data for your route to use okay it doesn't necessarily have to be shown on the screen it can be used for all sorts of logic because you might actually have in here logic that connects to a database pulls information out of a database and then sends it back because your data more than likely is not going to be hard coded like this so you might use a mongoose to connect to a mongo database you might use next to connect to some sort of sql database but you're gonna probably go pull the data from somewhere and then send it back okay now let's show you about queries okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this second param random2 instead we're gonna say that there's a query called random2 so rec has another object inside of it called query so rec.query now where does that data come from the way you do a query so notice I don't have to specify like the word random to anywhere I just used it the reason is it's gonna look inside the query so the way you add a query to a URL is you use the and um, use a question mark symbol that tells it oh there's a query going forward then I put in the key then I'm the, the key so in this case random to and then I say what it equals random to is equals world so what happens is that when this gets sent to express express immediately breaks down this URL so it breaks down this query so it's gonna say okay there's a query there's a key called random to world equals world so now if I hit enter on this I should still get hello world which I do and again if I change my query so if I change this to worldy so you get hello worldy and I can have more than one query parameter so if I want to add another query I can just use the and symbol and say cheese equals Gouda okay and then I can let's just do this console.log rec.query so you can just see all the queries in the console okay so again we have random2 equals worldy and cheese equals gouda and again I can just keep adding more things and express is gonna break it down and put it into an object so when I hit enter here see it creates this object right here I console logged it and notice when I console logged it shows up in this console because this is running in the back end not in the browser so if I were to bring up the browser console there's nothing there because this code didn't run in the browser it ran on the server so it prints from the servers console which is node only the code that runs in the browser is going to print to this console over here so you just got to keep in mind like where is your code running let's see I can add as many queries as I want and it just kind of turns them into an object that I can use which is pretty cool okay now oftentimes you'll have a lot of middleware that occurs before your routes so the, the typical pieces you're going to want okay so we usually put this in a section called middleware first we're going to have exp um, and the way you use middleware is you always do app.use it just means app.use just means use the function that's inside and then pass it on okay so app.use express.json so you might actually have you might actually send JSON data to um, your API and it needs to be able to interpret that JSON data so that's what this does it's gonna look inside the body of your request see if the body of the request is JSON data and if so parse it and make it an object that you can use which would be called rec.body then there's app.use express.static and then we'll put in the word public here and what this does it sets a folder up to be your static folder so now watch if I did this so let me get rid of these routes for a second let me get rid of all the routes actually I don't even need to do that so right now if I go to the root so let me just go back to the root for a second right now the root takes me to this hello world this this route right here because that's the one that matches that URL but now if I were to go in here and create a folder called public that matches my express.static public so new folder public what's and I go here and I put in a file called index.html 
And again, the way server, the way static servers behave is that the index.html is the same as just the name of the folder. Okay, so technically, an index.html in this public folder is the same as the root. Okay. So now here, I just type, I just make some basic HTML. I'm just going to do an h1 hello world. There you go. Now, if I type in enter here, watch what happens. See, now I'm not getting the small hello world text. I'm getting this big h1 hello world because technically it's no longer hitting that route. Technically, it already finished by the time it got here because again, everything happens in order. So when the request came in, the first thing it did was go through express.json and that does a thing. Then it passes it on to the next function. And what this does, it says, go look in the public folder to see if there's anything that matches this URL. And index.html in the root of the folder, the public folder, is gonna match the root route, okay? Index always just means that folder. So if I were to create another folder inside of here called cheese, and inside that folder, I create another file called index.html. Let's do the same thing. Except now it's going to be h2. And it's h2, we'll say gouda. Okay. Now watch what happens when I type in slash cheese. I get gouda. So even though I have a route called cheese, it never hits it. Because technically, it's checking this first. It's checking the static folder first. So keep that in mind. You don't want to put stuff in your static folder that might override your routes. So you always want to understand the behavior of these different functions and why the at, the order they're in matters. Because once a response is sent, it stops passing it on to the next function. So it starts from the top, goes through this, goes through this. And if it still hasn't found a response yet, then it goes through this, then through this, then through this. That's sort of the behavior of Express. But the, the really the purpose of the public folder is really this is where you would put your, like your CSS files, your JavaScript files um, that you'd want to sort of link to um, for front end purposes. Like this is where you'd put any kind of front end stuff if you want. Okay, so you can essentially create all your API endpoints here, and then in here put like an index.html then that calls that a API. So for example, if I were to go back to this index.html, and let's create an app.js, new file, app.js, and let me link that app.js in my, and again, so the difference between this is since I'm linking this JavaScript file through the index.html, this JavaScript file doesn't run into the browser. Okay, any, basically think about it this way. Any JavaScript that's loaded through a script tag runs in the browser. Okay, that's that's sort of the difference between your back end and your front end code. So app.js. So this is a front end JavaScript file. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna just do a quick fetch. And we're gonna fetch from localhost. I think I actually need to put the HTTP. HTTP slash slash localhost three thousand slash data because that's where we sent that data from and again just a normal dot then so the response then has the response has to be parsed so response.json and then we can actually do something with it so let's just say data equals console.log data okay so now if I go Ooh, back to the root and see here's the console log and there's that data Alex Merced H35 Bob H35 because we just made a call to our own API okay so our code here just said oh okay uh, just this is the URL of the API and it just did the thing so that's pretty cool okay and the cool thing is any website could make a call to that API. So if you wanted to make a separate mobile application, they can call the API. If you wanted to create a desktop application, they can call that API. So that same data, that same API, can not only be used for your web application, but can be used for other applications uh, that make use of the data. Which is why it's powerful to create all your data and serve all your data through an API and make your front-end code kind of separate, okay? Not 
building, not linking them together uh, like, like we used to do. So that's the deal there. Okay, at this point, I think we kind of did a fairly thorough coverage. Um, not of every possible thing, but I think this should give you a pretty good idea of how Express works. Um, or at least a good introduction. I have a lot of other videos on Express, so check those out. But this should definitely give you a strong start. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.